Hey, what is going on to Nintendo Nation? Hope you're having an awesome day. Now, a few days ago, we got the exciting reveal of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And like many fans, I'm excited about these future Pokemon titles. But I'm also very interested on how these games will follow up on 2016's Pokemon Sun and Moon. So in today's video, we'll be looking at my top 10 hopes for Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. These aren't necessarily things I expect to see in the new games, but what I think would make the games better than their prequels. Now I am making a video soon on my top 10 predictions for Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon, but I'm getting some art commissioned for it, so that will be coming later. But anyway, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see in these new games, and if you enjoyed the video and want to see more content on Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, then hit that like button down below and subscribe to stay up to date. And with that out of the way guys, let's get started. So this is probably the most unlikely hope to happen for Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon, but I would love to be able to visit the Kanto region again. So for those who never played Pokemon Sun and Moon, there were many references to the Kanto region, Alolan forms for Kanto Pokemon, and without spoiling too much at the end of the game, Lily travels to the Kanto region as well. So a lot of us were really hoping to visit the region in the next follow up. And now that we have Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Game Freak could give us that possibility. The last time we were able to visit the Kanto region was in 2009's Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, but to be honest, I can't see us visiting the Kanto region anytime soon. Firstly, there were many references to the Kanto region because Sun and Moon was a celebration of Pokemon Red and Blue's 20 year anniversary, so of course there will be a lot of references in it. Secondly, Sun and Moon were one of the largest games on the 3DS in terms of file size, and so fitting another region into the game would probably be impossible. Now if Ultra Sun and Moon had been announced for the Pokemon Switch, then I could definitely see it happening due to the Switch's better specs and better storage capabilities. So it seems unlikely, but hey, that's what this video is for. It's what I want, not what I expect. So if we cannot return to the Kanto region, there is another area I'd like to return to that I could definitely see happening. This area in particular is the Ultra Space, which you get to visit at the end of Pokemon Sun and Moon. The Ultra Space is the home of the Ultra Beast and can be reached by going through the portal that Cosmog or Nebi creates. Now we barely get to experience this bizarre and mysterious world and we still don't know much about it. The area of Ultra Space we get to explore is really small so I hope it opens up to a big area like the Distortion World in Pokemon Platinum. And obviously with the mystery surrounding the Crosma and the games being called Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon definitely makes me think we'll be seeing more of this area. So Pokemon Sun and Moon followed on from X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire with the disappointing trend of mythical Pokemon just being given to the player. This happened with Diancie, Hooper and Volcanion in the 6th generation and so far the trend has continued with Magearna and Marshadow. I don't understand why they don't try and give these Pokemon backstories instead of them being given to you by delivery man like you just ordered them off Amazon.com. I'd love to see in-game mythical Pokemon events like the ones from Diamond, Pearl and Platinum. These in-game events with Darkrai, Shaman and Arceus gave us much more backstory and interaction than any of the mythicals from 6th generation onwards. And I think that's why these Pokemon are some of people's favourites, because they actually serve a purpose to the game's backstory and lore, and they can also just be found in the region, which is much more fun to actually try and find these Pokemon instead of just being given to you. So I personally feel mythical Pokemon aren't as magical as they used to be and I think this is a good opportunity for Game Freak to redeem Sun and Moon's mistakes by just giving these mythical Pokemon to you by giving these Pokemon in-game events and areas you can find them in in the Alola region. One of the problems I've encountered with Pokemon games over the last few generations is that they seem to be catering to a more child-friendly audience over the last few games with games becoming easier in difficulty and more linear. When Pokemon Sun and Moon launched, I was happy to find that the game felt more difficult than X and Y, but wasn't as hard as Generation 5, so it was a good balance. However, the main problem with Sun and Moon was how easy it was to navigate around the region. Not only is the Alola region the most linear region to date, meaning once you beat the story, you have explored absolutely everywhere. No after story areas, no secrets, that's it. And I think that's when I realised Sun and Moon wasn't as good as I initially thought. Sure, the story is good and it is definitely longer than the other games, but afterwards there is no reason to go back to this game unless you want to do Wi-Fi stuff. So the main improvement I want to hear is the Alola region to become less linear. It would be great if we could turn off the Rotom decks as it was always telling us where to go. It's not a bad feature, but for us veteran players, we want to explore the Alola region without the game holding our hand. 
Now for me, this was probably the biggest mistake Game Freak made whilst working on Sun and Moon, and this was introducing the awful Festival Plaza. What the heck was wrong with the PSS? It was quick to get to, well designed, and above all, did its job. The Festival Plaza on the other hand was a confused, clunky mess. Whilst I appreciate Game Freak trying something new, this decision definitely backfired. The majority of fans did not like it and longed for the PSS to return. Now personally, I think Game Freak have too much pride to actually take out the Festival Plaza, so I can only see them either keeping it how it is, or slightly reworking it. But personally, a return to the PSS would be the best option. So in Pokemon Sun and Moon, we were introduced to Trials and Trial Captains for the first time, and whilst it is good for Game Freak to try something new, I felt the trials were a little lacklustre. The trial tasks you had to do just felt like chores, and a couple of them, like Kiari's and Sophocles' trial, were painfully easy. However, the Pokemon battles themselves were a real challenge, but I was disappointed with the role of trial captains. You hardly see them, and they feel more like health and safety supervisors, rather than actual captains. What's even worse is trial captains like Kiawe, who have a painfully easy trial and battle, you only see for 10 minutes and then that's it. Now I'm sure people are thinking, well, gym leader battles aren't that long either, and that's true, but remember, you don't get to battle the trial captain during a trial, you battle the wild Pokemon. Now you can actually find these trial captains in the Alola region and battle them, but you only get to do it once and they're pretty low level, so honestly, there isn't much point. So I'd love it if we could actually battle the trial captain for the trials in the Alola region, rather than just battling the wild Pokemon. And even if they do keep the wild Pokemon battles for trials, I'd love it if we could actually battle the trial captain and then re-battle them and they'd actually get stronger this time, instead of just a one-off low level battle, which honestly wasn't too fun, because by the time you can actually find them in the Alola region, your team is much much higher than theirs are. Now I think re-battling these trial captains in Ultra Sun and Moon is definitely a possibility as follow-up games like Pokemon Emerald gave the player the option to re-battle gym leaders as well as in Heart Gold and Soul Silver and even X and Y at the Battle Chateau, although in that game they don't use their full team and they are level capped, but it's still better than nothing. So hopefully we can see more of the trial captains in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. One of the biggest mysteries in Pokemon Sun and Moon was the Pokemon Necrozma, which was given very little information and strangely enough was not considered an Ultra Beast by the International Police. Now after seeing Solgaleo and Lunala's new forms, we know Necrozma is going to be involved in some way or another, but I'd actually like the story to mainly focus on Necrozma this time around instead of Solgaleo and Lunala. We know Necrozma has a link to the main legendaries, and Sun and Moon gave us a story totally focused on them, so it would be great if we get to know all the secrets about Necrozma this time. Now I think we definitely will find out everything about Necrozma, but I want it to be the main focus of these games, instead of just a simple retelling of Solgaleo and Lunala's story, because we already know all the twists and turns in that story from Pokemon Sun and Moon, so it won't be as much fun to just focus on them again, and then just have Necrozma thrown in at the end. I think it would work much better if the story focuses all about Necrozma, and how Solgaleo and Lunala are linked to it, rather than the other way around. Now probably the biggest change in Pokemon Sun and Moon was the introduction of Alolan forms, which gave new typings to old favourite Pokemon. Now these Pokemon weren't as exciting as Mega Revolutions, and some of the designs weren't as good as the others, looking at you Alolan Persian and Dugtrio, but they were a good addition to the Pokemon franchise. Now I find it highly unlikely that we'll get another Alolan form, since there weren't any leftover ones in the data for Sun and Moon, which we assume we'll be able to trade with Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon. However, it might be possible if Game Freak have learned from their mistakes from X and Y, by leaving everything in the data for people to find. If they have intentionally left things out of Sun and Moon, like new Alolan forms, then a simple update for Pokemon Sun and Moon would allow them to be traded over from Ultra Sun and Moon. Or if worse comes to worse, just make them exclusive to Ultra Sun and Moon for now. But as you guys could imagine, new Alolan forms, especially if they're given to other generations this time, could open up so many possibilities, and that would be very, very exciting to see. So my biggest fear for Ultra Sun and Moon is it potentially just being a retelling of Pokemon Sun and Moon, with just a few changes in the story and the region. This is how third entries in a Pokemon game series used to be, like Pokemon Crystal, Emerald and Platinum. They felt like a deluxe edition or Game of the Year edition of the game we had already played. 
and that's why I was pleased that that trend ended in the last third entry games, Pokemon Black and White 2. These were set a few years after Black and White and felt like a new experience even though it was set in the same region. Now the reason why I don't think we'll have this this time around in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is because it says it is an alternate story which most likely takes place in another dimension to Sun and Moon but will probably be at the same time as Sun and Moon so no time skips. Now by setting it as an alternate story sure you can do a lot of changes like change the villain, plot and even the wild Pokemon in the Alola region but that wouldn't be enough to me. Many players like myself were invested in Sun and Moon's story and characters especially Lily, Gladian and Lusamine. So I'd much prefer a time skip and see Lily return to the Alola region as an older and more mature trainer, rather than a retelling of her story which we most likely will be getting in Ultra Sun and Moon. So originally for my number one point I was going to have a big rant about how Pokemon Sun and Moon's after story was the worst the series had seen and how it needed a big improvement for Ultra Sun and Moon. But I feel like I had touched on most of the problems with the after story when talking about how the game holds your hand all the way through the story. So luckily I had another point that I felt equally passionate about that I'd like to see make a return in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. This is Pokemon following the trainer and like the Kanto region we haven't seen this since 2009's Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Now Pokemon following the trainer has been one of my favourite features in a Pokemon game and I'm sure a lot of you can agree with that. I find that walking around with a Pokemon grows me closer to them as we share more of the adventure together. Now although it would be difficult to add this feature into Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon due to the 3DS's computing power, there is a good possibility that this could happen. This is thanks to the YouTuber Kazo War who found that every single Pokemon, even Mega Evolutions, have a walking and running animation. If you want to check out all the Pokemon walking animations I will leave a link to their channel in the description so you can check it out after this video ends. Now of course there is a possibility that this was a scrapped feature that could be used in the next Pokemon generation, but you can tell whoever made all these animations put a lot of effort into them, and it wouldn't make too much sense leaving these animations in the game's data if they're not going to be used, as it would take up a lot of space. So I definitely think it's a possibility that Pokemon following the trainer will make a return for Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and if they do add this feature I will be so much more excited for these games. So those are my top 10 hopes for Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see added or fixed for these games. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to stay up to date with all things Pokemon, hit that subscribe button as well. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I will see you in the next video. Peace!